Welcome to the canceled news, because if there's one thing everyone needs right now, it's more news and politics. Uh, today was a big day for me. I'm actually going back to work uh, for the first time since June uh, next week. So I had to go get a COVID test to get back on the Warner Brothers lot. Um, I took the test at Warner Brothers, which is right next to the Forest Lawn Cemetery. Uh, so that's convenient, because if your COVID test comes back positive, there's a 1 100th of 1% chance that you'll wind up there. Uh, I was actually surprised at how easy the COVID test was. I heard that they like shove a Q-tip way up your nose and like it feels like it's scraping your brain and it hurts. I didn't feel like they shoved it up there that far. I think it's perfectly safe. No reason to worry about it or, you know, believe any of the conspiracy theories. Here's what's in the news. According to Nate Silver's 538, Joe Biden has a 71.1% chance of winning the election, which means he's almost as sure to win as Hillary Clinton was last time. According to a report in The Atlantic, Donald Trump once avoided visiting a U.S. military cemetery because he didn't want to get his hair messed up in the rain. Okay, now he's just trying to relate to black voters. A new Military Times poll showed that more troops plan to vote for Joe Biden than Donald Trump. And according to Democrat voter registration, Biden is especially popular among soldiers who served in the War of 1812. The cast of Princess Bride will be reuniting for a fundraiser for the Democratic Party of Wisconsin, uh, except for Andre the Giant, who's dead and will only be voting for the Democratic Party of Wisconsin. Now, the cast of The Princess Bride will be campaigning for Joe Biden, who is only mostly dead. There's a big difference between mostly dead and all the way dead. Mostly dead is still slightly alive. Some Disney workers claim the company is hiding the number of coronavirus cases at its theme parks. There's also been a suspicious increase in the number of skeletons on the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Speaking of Disney, Disney's live-action Mulan movie was released this week to mixed reviews. Some people didn't like it, while others thought it was garbage. Although Mulan was released this week, the Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang where it was filmed were not. A one-night-only charity event will feature a new performance of The Golden Girls featuring an all-black cast. This, of course, came in response to the Twitter campaign Hashtag Betty Too White. The cast will feature Tracy Ellis Ross, Regina King, and Jimmy Kimmel, who's still not canceled and is scheduled to host the Emmys. Arby's is now selling meat by the pound, for those of you who have completely given up. Trump supporters have been using the song YMCA at rallies, and all the members of the village people are upset except for the cop. I can't even write a punchline to that. That story is an entire joke in itself. Some people are calling for a boycott of Netflix over its new film, Cuties, which some are comparing to child pornography. Now, the footage from this movie really is disgusting. Just take a look at this clip. I'm not going to show a real clip from that movie. That's what I don't understand about the people protesting this movie. They're all just posting the most salacious clips on their Facebook page. It's like, don't let any pedophiles see this clip right here. Multiple boats sank during a Trump boat rally on Texas Lake Travis, despite being warned for months about a blue wave in Texas. A new study found that 14% of men admit to being aroused by the voice of Amazon Alexa, while the other 86% describe themselves as Siri men. In a diversity initiative that backfired, the University of Michigan created segregated online cafes for its students. This came right before they unveiled their new mascot, Jim the Crow. It's 9 o'clock and Michigan still sucks. A gender reveal party in California sparked a wildfire that burned over 8,000 acres, which means it's a boy. Had it only burned 6,000 acres, it would have been a girl. But this is really tragic. To put this into perspective, 8,000 acres equals one acre for every gender recognized in California. The mayor of San Francisco is mad that a group of 1,000 revelers gathered without masks on a beach to celebrate Burning Man. Don't you people care about health and hygiene? She screamed into the orgy tent. This week, Cardi B got into a feud with conservative activist Candace Owens. Now, this is exclusive. I actually arranged a debate between Cardi B and Candace Owens, uh, so you can watch and decide who makes more sense for yourself. Lyndon Baines Johnson, uh, who uh, authored, you know, who, who, who signed the Great Society Act, um, went after and targeted black men. It was a t he, he was a avowed racist. He hated black people, used the N-word his entire life, wouldn't even refer to his driver who was black as uh, by his name. Because guys don't throw money at ugly girls, right? 
You're exactly right that that is another that's another uh, corollary, and I agree with you. Mm-hmm. And what and in terms of you hear me speak about this often, trying to turn feminism, trying to make women aspire, you know, turn women into men. <laughs> I mean, um, sometimes it's like, is it worth like? Um, is if is it worth sometimes like experimenting? Like it's like let's say if I sleep with a guy, right, and I don't like his sex, and then I gotta curve him, and then it's like, damn. I disagree with all of that. I think that resetting that has also contributed to the breakdown of family dynamics. That's also why I'm against the trans movement. DJ Eric Marillo, who's famous for the 1993 hit "Move It," passed away this week at the age of 49. Now, his funeral is set for Los Angeles, but travel restrictions keep his parents from leaving Brazil, so they'd like to move it, move it. A new National Geographic special alleges that Osama bin Laden sent coded message in pornographic videos. Really? Or did an FBI agent get caught watching porn and go, oh, uh, I'm looking for secret Al-Qaeda messages? New Oscar guidelines mandate that Best Picture nominees must meet inclusivity guidelines, which means the lead actor or 30% of the cast has to be minorities. So get ready for the only two Best Picture nominees that qualified this year, Mulan or Cuties. But this is ridiculous. Had these standards been in place in the 90s, Braveheart would have lost to Don't Be a Menace to South Central while drinking your juice in the hood. The city of Los Angeles has canceled trick-or-treating this year. Not because of the pandemic, it's because no one in Los Angeles has a home to trick-or-treat at anymore. And don't worry, everyone will still be dressed as hobos. And although they canceled trick-or-treating, Figueroa Street will still have tricking. A man is suing Kevin Spacey for allegedly raping him when he was 14 years old. In order to deflect from the allegation, Kevin Spacey came out as gay again. Now, Kevin Spacey couldn't be reached for comment because he's busy working on an all-male reboot of the Netflix hit Cuties. Justin Timberlake joined a group of investors trying to bring a Major League Baseball team to Nashville. In a related story, Joey Fatone auditioned to be the mascot. Adam, your nose is bleeding. What? Is that from the what? COVID test? No, no, it's not from the COVID test. This has been happening ever since they put that 5G tower outside. <laughs>